In this lesson, we are going to continue talking about parallel lines. Uh, we will be applying them specifically to triangles. And we will be using parallel lines to prove theorems about triangles and find measures of angles in those triangles. One of the postulates that we're, we will find useful is the parallel postulate, which says that through a point that's not on a line, you're only going to find one line that's parallel to the line that goes through that given point. Our triangle angle sum theorem says, and we already know this and use this quite frequently, it says that the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle add to 180. And our we're going to use the, the last parallel line theorem um, to create an auxiliary line to help us in our proofs. And this auxiliary line is a line that we add to our diagram just to help us explain some relationships in the proof. So that's a picture of what that auxiliary line will look like. We're going to use that in the next slide. So here's our proof of the triangle angle sum theorem. If we're given a triangle ABC, we want to prove that the sum of angles A, 2, and C, so the sum of the angles in the triangle, are 180 degrees. So we're going to start out by drawing this line PR that goes through vertex B, and it's parallel to the opposite side AC. And we're going to use the parallel postulate to allow us to do that. And then we're going to say angle PBC and angle 3 form a linear pair. So PBC. Okay, that's the angle that looks like the sum of 1 and 2, right? Angle PBC plus angle 3 form a linear pair, and that's just the definition of a linear pair. So here's a uh, figure down at the bottom that shows you which angles they're talking about. So therefore, we know that PBC and angle 3 are supplementary, and any angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. We already know that. So the measure of PBC plus the measure of angle 3 is 180 definition of supplementary angles. Step 5 says the measure of angle PBC is the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. Well, PBC is made up of those two angles, so that's our angle addition postulate. So now we have angle PBC is 1 plus 2, so we can substitute that back in then to step 4 and get our equation using the substitution property. So now we have the angle 1 plus 2 plus 3 gives us 180, and that makes sense from our picture. It forms a straight line. So now we're going to say angle 1 is congruent to angle A, and angle 3 is congruent to angle C. Well, why would that be true? Well, if you look at these two lines that we set are parallel, angle 1 and angle A are alternate interior angles. They form that letter Z. And likewise, angle 3 and angle C form a backward Z. So those are also alternate interior angles. So now we can go ahead and um, say that the measures of their angles are congruent, which allows us to use substitution and prove what we were trying to prove, that the measure of angle A plus 2 plus C is 180 degrees. And all we did here is we substituted instead of angle 1, we put in angle A. And instead of angle 3, we put in angle C. So now we can use that triangle angle sum theorem to find values of angles in triangles. It says find the values of x and y in our diagram. Well, there's a triangle ABD right here. So we know the sum of those three angles must add to 180. And if we add the constant terms together, we get 102 plus x equals 180. Subtracting 102 from both sides, we get x equals 78. Okay, on the right-hand side we have a triangle, but this one has two unknowns. So we need to relate x and y before we do anything else. If we know x is 78, x and y form a linear pair. So we can go ahead and solve for angle y by substituting the value of x, and y turns out to be 102. So lastly, we can find angle z. Use the diagram, what's the value of z? Well, we know y. So we can go ahead and find the value of z by using our angle triangle angle sum theorem. 49 plus y plus z is 180. But we already found y to be 102. So if we solve that for z, we get 29 degrees. 
Here's a couple of new definitions for you. We're going to talk about exterior angles of polygons. We've talked about exterior angles when we're dealing with lines, but now for polygons, if we extend one side of our polygon, um, the exterior angle is the angle that's formed by that extension and an adjacent side. So in the picture, all of the red angle number ones are called exterior angles. The two angles that are opposite that exterior angles are called remote interior angles. And it turns out from theorem 311 below, the triangle exterior angle theorem, that the measure of this exterior angle out here turns out to be the sum of the two remote interior angles. So now we have another neat theorem that can help us find some angle measures. So what's the measure of angle 1? Well, from our triangle exterior angle theorem, we know angle 1 is equal to the sum of those two opposite angles, which is 80 and 18, which gives us 98. Again, we can use the triangle exterior angle theorem for the measure of angle 2. So 124 will equal the sum of the other two opposite ones. And we can solve that for angle 2 by subtracting 59 and that gives us 65 degrees. So this problem below says two angles of a triangle measure 53 degrees. What's the measure of an exterior angle at each vertex? So we could have two angles equal to 53 degrees. We have two possibilities in this triangle. I've drawn a picture here. So if we have two angles that are 53, um, the remote opposite angles, interior angles, would be, it could be the sum of those two, which would give us 106, or it could be the sum of the other two. We'll actually have two exterior angles that are the sum of 53 and 74, which is 127. Here's a problem um, using uh, airports and radar. It says, when radar tracks an object, the reflection of signals off the ground can result in clutter. Clutter causes the receiver to confuse the real object with its reflection called a ghost. So at the right, there's a radar receiver at A and an airplane at B, and the airplane's ghost is down here at D. What is the value of angle X? Well, we know that 80 degrees is an exterior angle, and X plus the other 30 degree angle will give us the measure of of 80 degrees when they're added together. So if we set up our equation, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B will give us the measure of angle BCD. BCD is the 80 degree angle. Now substitute in the ones we know. Angle B is 30, BCD is 80. We can solve for X by subtracting 30 and we get 50 degrees, which was letter B. So in the reasoning over at the right it says, is there any other way to find angle A without using the triangle exterior angle theorem? And yes, there is. If we know that angle BCD was 80, we know that angle BCA is 100 degrees, and 100 plus 30 is 130. We can use our um, triangle sum theorem. So 100 plus 30 is 130, and we can subtract from 180 to give us our 50 degrees left for angle X. Here are a couple of problems for you to try on your own. Uh, bring your answers to class and we'll talk about those in class. See you next time.